Hello friends, in last few videos we got to know about the life of Buddha. After that we understood teachings of Buddha and in addition to that we also got to know about the spread of Buddhism and about the role of Sangh in that. In today's video we will be discussing about the Buddhist council. So as we have seen in our previous videos that Buddha attained Nirvana that is enlightenment at the age of 35 years and ultimately at the age of 80 years he died. After attaining Nirvana in these 45 years Buddha continuously preached the teachings of Buddhism and to make this work effective he created an order of his followers called Sangh. So Buddha gave his teachings continuously to the bhikshus of the Sangh and these bhikshus continued to spread Buddha's teachings from place to place. But whatever teachings Buddha gave to these bhikshus of the Sangh during his lifetime were not recorded anywhere in written form. And when Buddha died in 483 BC, the first Buddhist council was organized so that all the teachings of Buddha could be recorded in a written form so that purity of Buddha's teachings would remain intact for centuries. First Buddhist council was organized in Rajgir. Rajgir was the capital of Magadh and in today's date this place is in Bihar. This council was patronized by Ajat Satru, who was the ruler of Haryanka dynasty. The chairman of first council was Mahakasappa. This name is similar to Katappa, so it will be easy for you to remember. In this council, Upali composed Vinaya Pitak, in which you get to see all the rules that any bhikshu, that is any Buddhist monk or nun have to follow, including Pati Mokha rules, which we talked about in the previous video. Along with this, in the same council, Ananda composed Sut Pitak. Here, the word Sut in the Sut Pitak has been derived from the Sanskrit word Sutra, which means thread. And in this context, Sutra means a style by which ideas can be expressed in short and condensed form. And in Sutra Pitak, Ananda composed the teachings of Buddha, in which the same things were written that Buddha himself said in his lifetime. The Sutra Pitak presents the Buddha's teachings in the form of a dialogue. Both of this canonical text were composed in the Pali language. So if we summarize the first Buddhist council, we can see that this council was organized in 483 BC, in the same year that the Buddha died. It was organized in the capital of Magadh, Rajgir. Its chairman was Mahakasappa and this council was patronized by Ajat Satru. After 100 years, that is in 383 BC, the second Buddhist council was organized. This council was organized in Vaishali, which is in present day Bihar and its chairman was Saba Kami. You can remember the name of Saba Kami by the name of former cricketer Saba Karim. And this council was patronized by Kal Ashok. And a controversy arose during this council in which some Buddhist monks wanted to add some more monastic rules to the Vinaya Pitak. The same canonical text that was composed by Upali in the first Buddhist council. So in this second Buddhist council, there was a dispute about whether more monastic rules should be added to the Vinaya Pitak or not, which led to a division in the Sangh. Those people who were talking about adding more rules to Vinaya Pitak were in minority. They were called orthodox, that is old-fashioned, and they were also known as Sthavirvadi or Theravadi. Apart from this, the group which was in majority was considered unorthodox and they were called Mahasangikas. So that was about the second Buddhist council. After that, in 250 BC, third Buddhist council was organized. This council was organized in the capital of Magadh Patliputra, which is in today's Bihar. Its chairman was Mogliput Tissa. He is also known by the name of Upgupta. And this council was patronized by Ashok. In this council, Abhidham Pitak was composed. Now the question is that immediately after Buddha's death, all the knowledge received from Buddha was composed in two canonical texts, Sut Pitak and Vinaya Pitak. Inside the Sut Pitak, there were the teachings of Buddha and inside the Vinaya Pitak, there were the rules that nuns and monks had to follow. Then what were the teachings of Buddha in the first Buddhist council which could not be recorded then? 
that is which were not composed and now almost after 230 years there was talk of composing it so the thing is that this abhidham pitak is a new canonical text in itself but the details inside it are basically derived from sut pitak here all the teachings of sut pitak are thoroughly studied and organized in a systematic way in the form of list summaries and question and answers that is it can be said that this is a revised version which has better explanation better representation and it has been composed in the form of question and answer summaries have been given so that more people can understand it better so in this way we can say that the final version of three pitaks was completed in the third buddhist council these three canonical text that is sut pitak vinaya pitak and abhidham pitak together these three are called three pitak and the literal meaning of three pitak is the three basket or three collections after this in the first century ad the fourth buddhist council was organized this council was organized in kashmir and its chairman was vasumitra and this council was patronized by kanishka in this council buddhism was divided into two major sects these two major sects were hinayan that is lesser vehicle and mahayan that is greater vehicle now it is obvious that they might not have got these names by mutual consent because why would anyone keep the name of his sect as lesser vehicle so basically what happened is that mahayanist themselves gave the name of hinayan to the people of other sects and we will see why this happened in a short while so the thing is that the difference between these two is related to their goal hinayan says that the goal of every monk is to attain nirvana that is enlightenment in his lifetime because when he achieves this goal he becomes free from the cycle of the world mahayanist said that this goal is a lesser goal that is why mahayanist called the sect as hinayan so now it is to be seen that if this goal is a lesser goal then what can be a greater goal than this so the goal of mahayanist was that a monk would work for the welfare of the people by becoming a bodhisattva and a bodhisattva is a person who is just one step away from nirvana but instead of achieving nirvana they decide or choose that they will help other people so they can achieve nirvana so this is the goal of those who follow mahayan sect and this is what mahayanist have called greater vehicle and said that their sect is based on mahakaruna that is greater compassion for others whereas hinayan said that everyone should work for their own salvation the one who works hard on the right path will get salvation so i hope you must have understood the difference between hinayan and mahayan now because two different sects have been formed in buddhism therefore their literatures will also be slightly different so the mahayanist produced their own sanskrit versions of the three pitaks as well as a new set of sanskrit literature called the vapulya sutra so this was the difference between hinayan and mahayan now because in mahayan apart from buddha great importance is also given to bodhisattvas that is why these people gradually started idol worship of buddha and bodhisattvas now there is another point to be noted here and that is that ashwaghosh also attended the fourth buddhist council now you will ask who is this ashwaghosh then it is believed that ashwaghosh was the first sanskrit dramatist and before kalidas he was considered as the greatest indian poet and at the same time he was also the spiritual advisor philosopher and guide of kanishka he also wrote buddh charitra in sanskrit so these were the details of buddhist council you can download pdf of this video from bookstava app to understand indian history and indian polity in detail do follow bookstava playlist link is given in the description box thank you for watching